Hi everyone, my name is Diane Fago and I am a mixed media artist and a magazine collage artist and I share my creative process with doing those things here on my channel and today I am going to show you how I take a magazine image that has text on it and how I cover that up with paint. There's a few different ways that I do that but for these current images that I'm working on in my journal, this is how I'm going to take care of that is to cover it with paint. So I thought I would take you along and show you how I take a magazine image that looks like this and turn it into one like this. So please stay with me and I hope you enjoy this and I will turn the camera around and we'll get started. Okay, so here is the image that I am going to be working on and there is a little bit of text right up there. There's this right here which I had forgotten about until I was just looking at this whenever I was getting ready to start videoing that. And then there's some text down here. And when I was originally working on this page and trying to figure out how to place everything, I had this bit, the quote, poem, up here in this corner. And as I was starting to really start thinking about finally gluing, gluing this down, I, I have really been working on this page for probably a couple weeks now. And I've just kind of let it been taking its time and not rushing it. And now I'm to the point where, okay, I really need to get this done and get it in because I am so excited and so anxious to get this journal finished. But let me get this here. But as I was looking at her and, and really, really, really starting to commit to how I wanted all these different elements layered on here, I started thinking that maybe it would be best to move that bit of text. I need to trim that a little bit. Um, to move that bit of text to a different, to down here. So just because I, with how I was thinking about it, the only way it was going to work was if I covered up some of her wings. And that's, this is how I had originally thought about doing it. And, but as I was looking at it, I don't really think that I want to cover up her wings, um, her wing hair. So, I've decided to move this down here and kind of tuck this in to this bit, to these little branches and whatnot. So in doing that, then it covers up a little bit of this down here when originally I would have had to cover all this up, but um, it really opens up that up there so that this is what you can see down here. And one solution for that is to maybe, I've got some of these extra little pieces from this big floral that I could add those up there and that probably distracts that enough to where if you weren't looking for that word up there, you probably wouldn't notice it. But I don't, I don't want that up there. I'm going to use these pieces to actually carry that bit of floral over onto the page that's gonna be on the other side. which is this one right here. So what I'm thinking about doing with these bits is actually have it do something, do something like this. So it's gonna go across to the other side. 
if I wanted to, I could add this section down here. Um, I'm not sure. Still kind of playing with that little bit of all of this, but I've decided that I prefer to leave this open. So what I am going to do then is paint over this since there's really no other way that I can cover up this little bit of text down here. There's not going to be a whole lot. It looks like just basically the last three lines. I could maybe put that down there, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to save that. I might even just kind of tuck this over here. This one's just really got, <laughs> this one's really got a lot of stuff going on with all of it, but I, it's, I like how, well, it, it is for sure just, it's inspired by, by this poem that I'm using. So, cause it talks about, talks about, um, rising from the ashes and that is for sure where these why I chose this because when I saw it it made me think of kind of almost like and I'm not sure if that's what this is but where I grew up down in down in in southwest Missouri we had bushes and it was called I think it was called fire in a bush um, you know, like the biblical bush in, uh, that Noah talks to, um, when he's out there up on the mountain. Um, so that's what this kind of reminds me of. Uh, so that might be some of that coming back from my childhood. But when I see this at the branches for sure, remind me kind of of flames coming up around her, and then with the flowers, just the color of the flowers, kind of like fire. So that is why I was really drawn to using this image. But I'm going to go ahead and have the poem down here. And once again, I had mentioned this in the previous video where I was talking about these last few pages. This poem is written by uh, one of our a local artists here in Omaha and I follow them on Instagram and I saw the poem and it really, 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 I just really, really could relate. Um, so much so that I happened to be working on these pages and I didn't really have any, I wasn't sure where it was going as far as the words that I was wanting to put on it yet. And I don't even think I had this one cut out. I'm not sure. So I was kind of about here. And when I saw this poem, I was immediately, I knew that that needed to be on this page. So that's when I found, found those. And I, it's much, it's busy, but I, I like it and as far as with going with with the words in here I like the way that this is all coming to be so um, just an example of what I'm going to do as far as covering up this text and I've done it often and it's funny because I was looking through this because I know that I had recently uh, done this on a different page in here and to the point to where I thought that I'd done kind of a really crummy job, but I, I can't find it. So <laughs> um, maybe I did a better job covering it up than I realized, but this is a really good example. And I will put a, a picture over here on the side that, that shows what this image looked like at first. But um, this here with the girl is one magazine image this is another one and then I've got these different elements added on to it but in this top one there was actually um there were words down here and then there was a bunch of text down here that I had to cover up so it and it is really really difficult 
to get the paint perfectly, perfectly match. And I really don't try, I try to get it as close as I can, but I don't get bent out of shape about having it be super, super matchy because I'm usually the only one who can tell or see that I've done that. And this is, this journal is for me. It's, it's, it, this is for me and it's not, you know, going under inspection. It's not going to be looked at by some big, huge art critic or, or, you know, being displayed in any, in any way, um, to where people would be like, oh, wait, look, look at that, that, you know, you could tell where she covered that up and that doesn't look great. And I, I don't think about that. I want it to match enough so that it, you don't, just you just don't notice it at all your eyes drawn to the actual images not to you know what i've covered up down here but let me get this up here so you can see a little bit better you can you know if you really look you can probably tell that this is this is different and this time here you can really see that this is glossy and then this is where the paint's at. On this side, I actually went ahead and went over it with a little bit of matte medium that had a little bit of gloss in it. And that kind of really helped blend that in. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to show where there's the difference. But if you just glanced at this, you would not realize that I've painted over text down here. So that is what I'm going to do with this up here, down, down here on these pages. Another option is, and I do this a lot too, is you can either cover, cover the words up if, if it works, you can cover that text up with florals or just with images, um, just with the different elements, anything that you can cut out and adhere down there on the page, you can work those around so that you cover up parts of text that maybe you don't want to be seen. Another thing that you can do is, I think actually there was words down here on her. There's paint down here. You can see where I painted that. So there must have been a little bit, there was a little bit of writing down on that. But if you just really, if you look at it straight on, you can't, you can't tell that I did that. Um, another thing that you can do is, if it works, is to use the word that's already on, on that page. So this is the magazine page here and it actually had the word reflect on there and I liked, that's what I wanted to use and so I used the word that was on there. And I've done that too, especially with these Bella Grace pages that have just poems or text um, writing across them. I have have used those pages just with the writing on it. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I just use regular old craft paints. I don't use anything fancy, anything special. I've got craft paints of several different brands. I don't use them a lot to where I bother with you know, I, I pretty much just buy on sale is, is how, how it goes with craft paints. I do like the Americana brand. I think that you know, I like the, just the tech, the, they just feel a little bit thicker and um, I like the way that they, the, they cover the, the paper a little bit better, but I really, I have just several different brands and I just use what I have and I just have of mine stored over um, at my work area on the side over there in an Ikea cart and I actually need to go through them because some of them are probably 10 years old and I know a lot of them are dried up so I need to clean it out and get rid of it because my cart's full and I need to just kind of purge that stuff out so I have just got these darker colors in this little tub here because the top of my cart is full of all my bright stuff and then for sure i'm going to need black 
and uh, let's just, I'm just gonna kind of grab some stuff. I just look and see like what kind of color I think might sort of match. <laughs> um, I am not trained in any way as far as color mixing or being able to see like the undertones of colors and things like that. I just kind of go with what what I feel might be it. And um, that's that is pretty much how I roll. So I've just got a few out. I, um, let's see, get some white and I've got black. All right. I think this black has something in it. And I just realized that I forgot to get me a jar of water. So I'm going to go do that. I've just got one of these trays here and I really like just to use these. I like to use a stiff brush. Um, I feel like I have a little bit more control over what's going on with it. This is just a really, really cheap brush from Michael's or Hobby Lobby, one of those places. So I just, I like, I like that it's half, half, um, <laughs> half hard with glue because I didn't, did not clean it out good. And, um, it just kind of helps me not get a whole lot of paint on it, especially I, I just, I like the ankle brush. It, it's just easier for me to control. So just whatever works best for you. I'm going to go get some water. Okay. So I've got some water here, got a towel just in case. And this paper is actually, it's not, um, like glossy magazine paper. So for sure, the different kinds of magazine paper kind of affect how it takes the paint. Um, really thin magazines can be a little bit more difficult to work on in that since they're so thin, they can easily um, kind of buckle and warp from just the, the moisture, the, the water in, in the paint. So that's kind of something you have to be a little bit careful of. Um, but this one is actually, this is from a calm, oops, a calm magazine. So it is a little bit different texture paint, but I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm just going to do this bottom part first because I think it'll be the easiest and it doesn't take a lot of paint so I try to not put a lot out I'm gonna put this is a little bit of darker brown I'll go ahead and get stuff out this is kind of a flesh color. This one's plugged because it hasn't been used in forever. If I can even get it open. There we go. I mean, really, it has been, look, look at this. This is how long it's been since I've used some of these. Isn't that just terrible? <laughs> that is awful. Actually, I can probably get what I need off the lid here. Um, I'll clean that out later. I usually just take my tweezers and grab all that and pull it out, throw it away. Um, this is a little bit lighter brown. I might kind of get some gray. Well, I can, and I know some of these, you, you know, if you're good at mixing colors and this will be a whole other situation for you. I think this white is bad. I feel like I've used it earlier and it wasn't good. It feels like it's separated. Well, I guess it's okay. Um, you know, if you're good at mixing colors, then, you know, you don't need to 
Don't worry as much as far as as things. Because it'd be easier, much easier for you to do this, but well, since I've got stuff on this one, I'll go ahead and go up here. Let's see if I can zoom you in. I've just been using my phone lately instead of my camera. It's just easier when it comes to transferring things over. But for sure, sometimes it's a little bit of a learning experience because I'm the folks. Sometimes I have problems with the focusing. So uh, let's see. And really, this is kind of just a lot of just. I just kind of start mixing stuff together and when it feels like it might kind of be close then I dab a little bit on there and see where it's at so this is like the most untechnical uh thing that that I do when it comes to covering these but and I'm sure there's a better way to do this but I'm going to turn this sideways because I'm left-handed and it might be a little bit easier. That's too light. Kind of do that. And a lot of times um, it helps to put one layer on and then let it dry oops do this one here and then that second layer of paint will cover a little bit better I'm gonna try to leave that line in the brick I should have done that with the other one so already that has made a big difference The good and you know it's kind of this is a little bit easier too because all these bricks are sort of different colors anyway so and they're kind of not evenly you know the edges aren't super straight and things like that so that makes this a little bit easier too um there are some that i've tried to cover it up with and i probably shouldn't have even shouldn't have even bothered did i have all that off the screen if i did i am so sorry um i had just mentioned how i was trying to get used to working on my phone that already looks a whole lot better and i really don't know if i'm gonna mess with that too much more there is for sure one of the, there's a time when you just gotta stop and cause sometimes overworking it can just make it a million times worse. So I almost feel like putting a little bit more of this gray on top. I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm okay with all of that. I think I'm gonna go over that little that little bit with some of this brown and get a different brush. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on here. I know I have a smaller brush, but I'm not sure exactly where it's at right now.
and with this it's not even so I'm really just kind of trying to be as loose as I can with it These lines aren't even with the bricks, I mean. All right, let me see what we got going on here. That needs to be a little bit softer. So All right. I think, you know, I think that's gonna work. It's could be this is for sure something that you just gotta like. <laughs> I have to really check my um, need for things to be super super perfect whenever I'm doing this because there that really helped by going over that a little bit there. I'm just really lightly going over that, those dark, the dark lines that I put on there. That really helped blend it in. All right, there we go. Okay. So, um, I'm happy with that. I don't know if I want to try to kind of fix that a little bit or not. All right. Well, okay. I think that's good. All right. Well, there's that. So, with putting all the other things up in here, it's, uh, I doubt that myself or anybody else is going to say, oh, hey, she like covered up something over there. Look at that. <laughs> so, yeah, see? Okay, I'm, I'm really happy with how that worked. All right, so now let's do this bit down here. And just for me and my left-handedness, it's going to be easier for me to have this sideways. So I'm going to make sure my brush is good and dry. This one should be a whole lot easier since it's just basically black. Um, I might add a, a little bit of something in there to... I don't know if this is if this black is too black. And I can mess around up here because I know that this is going to be covered up with the poem and so it doesn't have to be perfect so that is kind of nice because i can just kind of see how this is going to work and my brush is a little wet still and so i don't know if you can see how the paper is starting to buckle some This, I think, might have just a little, little, teeny, tiny bit of brown in it. Because it is not um, solid black. I say teeny, tiny, and here I am putting a bunch in. I feel like this is going to be better though. There's a glob of something on there. There.
And I kind of try to, you know, go off outside of the area if I can a bit. Just to try to blend it in as well as I can with the background. All right. Yeah, that was that was a whole lot easier. Except it warped up a little bit and I'm okay with that. Let me scoot this over. So there is that. Okay, well, let me zoom you back out. And let's see what we got here. All right, well, this up here is totally, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. And well, this down here is too. So let's put it all together and see what we got. And when I, um, just on a side note here, when I tuck, you know, this originally was had these branches over here, I can pick them up, connected to it. I think this one was kind of over here. I've got another piece somewhere. Uh, yeah, so this actually was a pretty involved <laughs> um, image that I cut out. I don't remember where this piece was, but this was all together all of this was, this is probably over here. Um, so whenever I originally had this tucked in behind my girl to see how it was going to work, a lot of this was behind her. And so what I do in that case is after I know exactly kind of how I'm going to have, have these, on and in and around my my people then I will turn this over and see what's on the other side so in this case like all of this was on this side and I don't want that to go to waste, first of all, because I spent a lot of time cutting this out. The second, I am able to, to save this and use it in different places. I can either use it on the what I'm working on. So I can, if I like it wasn't adding this image here at the bottom, I could then use these pieces to, you know, to tuck around and be around her. Kind of like so, something like that. So that's, that is why I always kind of clip off that extra that I have that is behind an image because it can, it can all be saved and used if, if I don't use it on here. Um, I can use it on, on something else or like how I've been doing recently and connecting so many of these pages that are side by side, connecting them together, then I am able to carry part of the element from one page over to the other. Which is what I'm doing with this one. So, I'm going to take these and bring them over to the other side. I don't know which ones, but we'll see. Oh, 
put it all together and see what we got. Just scoot this out of the way. And then I am finally, finally, finally ready to start gluing these pages down. And when I have something that is as insanely intricate as all this and so many different layers and parts and everything else, I adhere everything down on the mag on the page. This on here first, and then I take that sheet and adhere it into my journal. So I don't, I don't do it in the journal because there's with the way that I have these on here and worked together. I have to seriously kind of step back and look at things and try to figure out like what what to uh, what parts to adhere down first. And sometimes since I really really changed my collage style here, um, sometimes it takes me a little while to. I have to really stop and look, take a step back and kind of look and just think, okay, you know, what, what parts touching what and how am I, how is this interacting and weaving in through this other piece and what is the best way to get these, you know, down here, um, all adhered on here together. So, um, it, it takes, that part takes a little time, but now that I have gotten the text covered up on these, I am very ready to start gluing this all together. And I'm kind of excited. So, there. That is how it's going to look in the end. You cannot see any of that down there. The text that was down here on the bottom. Oh, I've got that little spot there. I forgot about that. This up here is good. I've just got that. Oh gosh, you got <laughs> Darn it, I thought I was done. Oh. Let's see, should we try to paint over that or uh, cover it up with something? I really like had my hopes, hopes up that I was finished. Um, well, darn it. I don't think I've got, I don't know if I've got anything that would work. And I really don't want more uh, any more foliage going on around on her because she's really in it. She's she's really coming out of the ashes here as we as the poem says. So um well geez. Um uh, let's see. Okay, let me kind of tuck that over there. Oh, I like that being open. There's so much going on in this that that's for sure why I left her as she is, as far as being on this white, white background. So, hmm. Well, the other thing that I could do, well, first of all, I haven't checked to see how this actually fits onto my journal. So this page could possibly be a little bit wide to where that might get cut off. The other thing that I could do is, is trim that off. Um, another option is to have a strip of paper that goes down this side and just cover it up with a piece of paper. 
And I've got this little basket here where I have just been collecting basically the cut off ends of pages, like any of ones that I have that have been too big that I've needed to trim the edges on, I've been collecting those here. So I could do something like, something like that, but a little bit wider. Um, and when I do that, I try to make it, well, you know, I have it blend in, match, with what is going on on the main image. I don't know if I've got anything that will work. Anything that I have cut out already. So, but I could, you know, do something like that. I think that's what I'm gonna do because I really don't know if I wanna try to cover that up. That one looks a little bit more involved. Sometimes, you know, there, there are some that just seem a little bit, a little bit more than what I feel like messing with at the time. If I do put a strip there, um, I don't know if I'll mess with her foot or not because it will cover up her foot. I don't know if I want to cut, cut the tip of her foot out so that it goes over the edge of the paper instead of covering up her foot. But I don't know if that's that big of a deal. Oh, let me grab my book here. And see what's going on. It's gonna go here on this last page. It's already gonna be difficult to get this in because it's curved so, so terribly much. Uh, let's move this back out of the way. And I can take all this part, I don't mind. All right, let's see what we got going on here. And then after I figure this part out, I'll finish with this. Well, look at that. Okay. That solved our problem right there. I'm glad I did not go through the trouble of painting it. So I'm going to tuck this, I'm do it this way so we can see. Get this up in the edge. So here's the page. Here is the page. So that's actually going to cut off quite a bit. So I need to go ahead and trim that off because that is going to affect uh, how I place all these other elements on there because that took, a, took quite a bit off actually that I wasn't thinking about. That's an inch of paper or workspace that I'm losing. So I don't want to trim out anything off on this side since it's getting so close to this edge with how I have her hand out. I don't know if I really want to do that. And since the way that it curves so much, I really, I don't want to do that. So I'll go ahead and trim this off. Um, that kind of changes uh, just that as far as her foot goes, a lot of her foot's going to get cut off. but. I don't think that's going to matter because that is also going to change how this guy right here fits on it. So it might cover up a lot of her foot to where that's not an issue at all. All right, well, okay, I'm glad that I figured that part out, which is another reason why I just have really kind of gotten to where I take my time doing this because if I had just like really been rushing and going through this and trying to trying to get this done super quickly, uh, I could have really, oops, sorry about that. I could have really, I could have really kind of messed this up as far as going through and getting all of this adhered down and then discovering that my base image was actually an inch too wide and I was going to have to cut things off. So 
that's going to take off just all basically from here. So, all right. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this and just another little bit of something I thought I would share as I get these last few pages um, completed in this journal and um, let's see this this whole part up here has been something I've been going back and forth on for days 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 part of me likes um, it covering up her face more the other part's like no I need to have her face out and I am really overthinking it so I think I've kind of decided to do something a little bit of both that's hooked on something I think I've kind of decided something like that it is there we go it was hooked right there okay this this image has been this floral's been something else to work with there we go I had it in the wrong place I knew it wasn't looking how I had originally thought about it if I wanted to I could there all right The other thing that I've been trying to decide as I look at this is if I want to cut these these two little leaves off because I don't know if I like those going into her face um, like because one's going basically one's going in her mouth and one's going in her nose and don't know if I want it to look like that so I might I need to be careful that leaf right there is getting fragile. That almost looks like she's holding on to the edge of the flower. That's kind of cool. So, do we bite the bullet and cut that off? Uh, let's do it. If I change my mind, I can I can put it back on there so I can glue it. I'm looking for my tweezers. Where are my tweezers? Are there. If I want it back, I can put it back on there. So I already like that better because it kind of opens up that space where her face is at. So let's cut that one off. were connected to that bigger piece. I should use my knife here. really dull because I just cut out a bunch of things. All right, let's try that. The other thing I need to do is cut this space real quick. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. So this is where the butterfly wing comes behind. Comes behind her back. I wasn't sure how much of it I needed to cut out, so I didn't want to cut all of it out. I think I'll just get a little bit more because I want her wing to be able to show in this place through here because if it was real, it would. So. That 
that's better. Okay. something like this. I know it's not exact because her hand isn't fitting in the same place. There we go. think that's good. I'm gonna do it like that. So now the fun part is starting to glue all this down. So I'm gonna sit here and look at this and figure out what goes on, what I should put on first, and the best way to start layering this all together. So, because it is a little tricky. So... I'll probably put her wings on her first. So her wings will go first because the flower, there's a part of her dress that's snagged there. Cause they are all touching her back and then I'll put the flower on. And I know that I was gonna have part of it, I believe tuck in behind her down here. So the most difficult thing to get down is going to be this flower since it's got these little thin crazy crazy leaves all over it. So So yeah, I'm going to put the wings on first and then I'll put the flower on and then I'll put this one on. And this is going to be the finished page. like that. That's how you do it. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to stop for now and start gluing this down and get this in my journal finally. And then I'm going to start working on this other page and it's a whole lot easier, well, you know, <laughs> a little bit less involved, but that's what we got going on. So I really hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that, um, you know, this shows you that just because there's text and words and whatnot in the way that, you know, if most of the time you can hopefully get it covered up with paint. If not, you can use other things to cover it up. But in this case, I was just focusing on covering the, the text and the words up with paint. So um, thank you so, so very much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, just have a really, really fantastic day. And please let me know how you're doing. If you like the comments, I do really enjoy hearing from you. Um, especially just what you think as far as what I've been sharing and if there's anything that you would like to see or for me to share 
and just thank you thank you so much i truly appreciate each and every one of you for being here and for being a subscriber so be sure if you're not to subscribe like uh really helps me out and i will talk with you again in a little bit thank you so much everybody Bye bye